And the box office top ten, here we go, um, courtesy of Comscore Movies. Oh. They've supplied us with the numbers and the information. Well, thank you to them. Thank you, Comscore Movies. We really like them. Thank you. Number 31. Are they paying for that? Or is that just a thing? Whenever I need a chart, I turn to Comscore <laughs> Movies. Number 31, Silver Haze. Which I think is great. This played at the Flair Festival, and uh, I was very proud to do it on stage with Vicky Knight, who is the star of the film. It's, it's, Vicky Knight and Esby Creed Miles are absolutely terrific in this film. You'll have to seek it out. It's a smaller release, but if you get a chance, do it. I thought it was a really brilliant drama. Migration is at number 10. Again, has done brilliantly. This has been in the charts for nine weeks and, you know, it's it's clearly found its audience. Wicked Little Letters in America, 26. In the UK, nine. Swearing is big and can be clever when it's written uh, as entertainingly as this. It is interesting that so many critics were sniffy about the film when it came out, but actually we've had so much correspondence from people who, uh, not me, I wasn't sniffy about it. I laughed all the way through because I think Olivia Colman's swearing is just funny. Number eight here, number nine in the States is Crew. Which I haven't seen because it wasn't press screened. Oh, come on. Sorry. Number seven is Immaculate. Which I think was is really exciting and interesting, but I am furious that I did not come up with the pun. It should have been called Rosary's Baby. Yeah, that was last week. I know, yeah. I know, and I'm I'm going to... I, in fact, I said I, I told the good lady professor her indoors, I said I thought of the name for this thing, Rosary's Baby. She went, that's brilliant. I went, yeah, it wasn't me. Darn it. Anyway, great honesty at the heart of that marriage. There it is, yes. Chris Brunker has emailed about the UK number six, which okay. is Mother's Instinct. Go ahead. And Chris says... Dear Pot and Kettle, Mark described, which is never a promising start. No. Mark describes Mother's Instinct as a pot boiler, saying of the film's heightened emotional tone that if you're going to have a pot boiler, the pot needs to be boiled. Yes. The phrase pot boiler refers to a piece of work, book, film, dashed off with minimal effort for immediate sale so the author can afford to pay essential bills, which doesn't seem fair to Mother's Instinct. Keep up the otherwise flawless work, Chris Brunker. No, I, but I don't mean it in that way. I mean, I mean a pot boiler as in, I mean, this. It, it's, I don't mean it as a derogatory term. I mean it as a positive term in the same way that I don't mean B-movie as a, as a derogatory term or exploitation movie, which, of course, people think that exploitation movie means that the film is exploitative. Actually, the term... For, for understandable reasons. <laughs> it's an easy mistake to make. But, of course, it actually, I mean... It means exploiting. I mean, what it originally meant was it was to do with exploiting headlines as opposed to exploitative of the... It's a different thing. Mm -hmm. You know, anyway, there we are. So exploiting in the way you can exploit the Earth's resources might be a good thing, but if but, but, it's exploitative, but, 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 that's a bad thing. If only I had said it so clearly. Charles Brandreth would be he impressed would, with would, that, would, wouldn't yes, he? Susie Dent would go, I wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> But would Charles Brandreth have come up with Rosary's Baby? Almost. Almost certainly. Yes, I think he probably did, like 10 years ago or something. Uh, so that's at number six. Number five, Ardu Jivatam. Again, wasn't press screen, so I haven't seen him. Uh, number four, but number three in the States, Dune Part Two. I mean, what else is there to say other than if you haven't seen Dune Part Two and you love cinema, what are you doing? Because regardless, whatever you might think of... Science fiction. What is it again? Scientific. 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 It's, like the, it's like the worst word I've ever yeah. heard. Whatever you might think of that genre. Skiffy. Skiffy. You need to see Dune Part 2 in the same way as you need to see Dune because it's just, it's like, look, this is what cinema can do. It's it's terrific. Uh, and th I think the only other thing to say is it is being watched by fewer people than Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, which is yeah, but, number three. Yeah, but it's been in the charts longer. That That's also why. also true. But so Ghostbusters not. is going down. And this, you know, so it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's the difference. Number two, Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. So this... Is it Godzilla Times Kong? Is that what it is? Go figure, right? Okay. Godzilla Times Kong, that's what it is. Yeah, okay. So, so they're together. Are they working together? Shall I do the thing? Well, or... I don't know. Okay. So we didn't understand the title. If you'll just give me a moment. Go ahead. We didn't review this last week because it was screened after we recorded the show. Oh, so goodness. since when I've been to the cinema to see it. So... Fifth film in the MonsterVerse. It follows on from Gareth Edwards' Godzilla, which I liked, Jordan Vogt Roberts' uh, Kong Skull Island, which I liked, and then Michael Doherty's Godzilla King of the Monsters and Adam Wingard's Godzilla v Kong. This is now Adam Wingard back for Godzilla x Kong. 
Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, Katie Hockney are back from the previous film. Dan Stevens is the new arrival. Okay. And he's an action vet. He's described at one point as Ace Ventura. He is in an opening sequence, early sequence, helicoptered into King Kong's open mouth in order to pull out one of his teeth. Okay. That's, that's, one, of, that's one of the action sequences. So Kong is living in Hollow Earth. Godzilla is on the surface, maintaining the kind of peace between humans and the Titans. So now, as you quite rightly said, the two monsters must team up because there's a new, bigger, bigger, scarier thing yes. that everyone's scared of, and it's going to cause bad stuff to happen. So now they must all jump into the hole. What is this thing? What is this? It's just terrible. It involves frost. And they must... Is it Mr. Freeze? Mr. Freeze. You don't, no one put... You don't put me in the cooler. Arnie is back. And um, and they must go down into Middle Earth and do... St- not Middle Earth. Hollow Earth is Middle Earth for all intents and purposes with the last survivor of a lost tribe, blah, 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 blah. So here's the thing. Everything was kind of leading up to Godzilla... Kong, Godzilla v. Kong. And then when you get there, it's like, okay, well, where do you go now? Because they've Godzilla and Kong, you know, you've got all the other ones, they've all been building out now, they've Godzilla and Kong, so... They can have babies. No, they can't, because one of them is Godzilla and the other is Kong. They are not the same species. It's They're reactionary. literally... You're re- such a Tory. Tory. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, at one point in this thing, Dan Stevens actually says, we are randomly throwing stuff. He doesn't say stuff. We are randomly throwing stuff at the wall. And that is literally what's happening in the film. They are just throwing everything at the wall to see if any any of it sticks. So it's basically, it's not just a mashup of Kong and Godzilla, but Land at Time Forgot, because you've got this sort of secret dinosaur land, Planet of the Apes, and all its sequels, Transformers, because at one point Kong gets given a robot arm because he breaks his hand, then he gets given a Transformers arm, so they can do that. Robocop, I suppose the same thing. Doctor Who, everything, everywhere, all at once, all happening. Biggest thing ever in the world of bigness. Star Trek, Stargate, Lord of the Rings, obviously, Mothra, every single thing that you can think of. It's just like, just throw everything at the wall. The script, well... There is a plot, but it's preposterous tosh, and it makes no sense, and it doesn't even try to make sense. It, 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 what it does is, the, in the way that we were saying before with Ghostbusters, when it was like, bore, 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 Bill Murray, bore, 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 Bill Murray. In this, it's stuff, 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 raw, stuff, 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 ah, and that's all that happens. It's like literally big monsters appear, and they look up at the sky, and they roar, and every now and then a death ray comes out of their mouth. Yeah. Entire cities get destroyed. Rio flattened in about five seconds. No one cares. No one cares. And you don't think there must have been 400 people in that building that just got trodden. No, no one cares at all. And the reason is because it has no weight. The whole thing looks like a video game. The visuals are shonky CG and then some. It's just endless swinging and bashing. And, you know, if you compare this to, and I don't know, it's. it's crass comparison perhaps if you compare this to Godzilla minus one right Godzilla minus one it's got weight it's got heft it's got beauty it's got grace this is literally it's just like Super Mario does Godzilla Dan Stevens has fun Rebecca Hall keeps a straight face Brian Terry Henry does the jokes apparently there is a possible sequel on the way but it's like what else can you do which letter of the alphabet if they've used V and X Godzilla Z Godzilla Godzilla Z Z Kong okay that'll work Godzilla Z Kong that does sound like a should we pay for that? Sounds like someone's elaborate name. Okay, isn't it? <laughs> Godzilla's eco. Luke in Gloucestershire. Yeah, go ahead. Dear Titanus Kermode, and is it Mecca Mayo? Yeah, Mecca. Mecca, yeah. Mecca okay. Went to uh, a late night, as in leaving at 1 a.m., kind of late, Friday screening of Godzilla times Kong, the new empire, in IMAX. I had a blast. I love Godzilla to bits, and I've enjoyed all the varied, increasingly silly Monsterverse outings over the last 10 years. This one was definitely not one of the best. I think maybe a result of uh, a lack of real stakes and poor pacing, but I still had a great time. The crazy, kaleidoscopic, sci-fi, skiffy visuals are spectacular. The insanely goofy fight scenes were a delight, and I enjoyed the film's various attempts and purely visual storytelling with its monstrous leads. As opposed to the standard human exposition dumps, which sadly are also still there, Kong is a great lead, but I do wish my man G had more to do than gradually mutate into a new action figure range. When he's there, he delivers, but he's not there nearly enough. Can I just say visual storytelling implies that there is a story. There isn't. One of the reasons that that the film, I think, was press screened late was because they wanted to press screen it on the biggest possible screen because the one thing the film has going for it is big monsters stare at the sky and shout and if if you see the, it's like okay it doesn't work and it doesn't make any sense but if it's loud and big enough people will come out and go well that was loud and big luke continues nobody's going to 
accuse this film of being a top tier masterpiece. <laughs> it's as dumb as they come on the big screen, but I really do feel there's a space for films like that, so long as they're made with some degree of love and actual craftsmanship. Alongside the Dune Part 2s and, yes, Godzilla Minus 1s of the world, I had a great film. I had a great time. That's all that matters. All the best, Luke from Gloucestershire. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. It's rubbish. I mean, but it's not unenjoyable rubbish, but it is rubbish. Okay, I think that maybe you're agreeing. Does Kung Fu Panda turn up at any stage? No. Would that it? will be the next one. Godzilla Z Kong V Kung Fu Panda. Because Kung Fu Panda number four is uh, a new entry and it's number one. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. There there was, I just did it. Nothing else to say. No.